Hey, Bio One students, uh, welcome back. Uh, we are going to uh, start going through these macro molecules with you today. There's four of them, and uh, see if I can knock out a couple of them today, and then we'll do a couple more tomorrow, and then we'll actually be caught up, and you'll be in the same place my other classes are at. So we're going to start with carbohydrates. That's one of your tabs. So if I have something in blue or red, as you can see here, uh, especially the blue stuff, highlight it, underline it, whatever, and make sure you put that in your foldable in the middle, okay? So there's instructions on online on that. So carbohydrates, the biggest thing here, we're gonna use glucose. It's not the only carbohydrate. There's a ton of others, but this is always our representative one. It kind of is the one that we just use as the poster child for, for carbohydrates. So uh, what you're gonna find is three elements in a carbohydrate, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the other thing you're gonna find is it's always one two to one ratio. There's always double the amount of hydrogens compared to carbon and oxygen. Carbon being the backbone, we talked about that the first part of this chapter, and carbohydrates always have that one two to one ratio. And the biggest thing is they're the main source of energy for most living things, okay? They can be used for other things, you'll see that. But for us and most living things, uh, there it's, it's an energy source, okay? Uh, and, and you can kind of watch that funny video when I post that later. But uh, there it is on, on uh, letter C here, the immediate energy. So highlight that. Some animals and plants use them for structure. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But for the most part, it's for an energy source. And and I teach uh, first aid. I'm a first aid trainer. And, and it's amazing. When I say immediate, I really mean that. If you have someone who has low blood sugar, I train this with my first aid kids. Um and, and their sugar levels drop in their blood. You give them an orange juice, a Mountain Dew, something with a lot of sugar in it, and they immediately start coming around. So, so they may be acting kind of uh, in a disoriented way. They may even go unconscious. You get in, you get sugar in them, and they start to come back very, very quickly. So we, we break this down really fast, um, and uh, it actually starts breaking down as soon as food enters your mouth. We have a, a saliva. We have amylase an enzyme in our saliva that starts breaking these carbs down as soon as they hit our mouth and that's what gives us that sweet taste so uh that's basically uh the big thing with carbs is that energy source now there are different types of sugars that make up carbohydrates this is super easy so uh kind of stay with me on this so monosaccharides mono is is simply means a single sugar right mono means single or one one sugar uh, glucose, galactose that you find in milk, fructose, lactose also in milk. Those are examples of monosaccharides. Okay, let's go back to the notes we took earlier. Remember I talked about how macromolecules are made from monomers, and we put these monomers, these single units together, and make these big macromolecules out of it. The carbohydrate monomer is monosaccharides. We take these single sugars, and we start putting them together, and we can get these complex carbohydrates out of them, okay? So let's say we take two of them. Let's take uh, fructose and glucose. So uh, the sugar out of a plant and fructose, the sugar out of a fruit. Put them together, you get this thing called sucrose, which you guys all know as table sugar. That white granular stuff we sprinkle on stuff and, and make things sweet all the time. That's taking two monosaccharides and putting them together because we all know that dye means two, right? Saccharides is a fancy word for sugar, okay? So we got two sugars, one sugar. That makes sense to you, okay? What's the word we use for many? Poly, right? So we have a third group called polysaccharides. This all makes sense if you think about it, right? So uh, that just means many monomers or sugars hooked together. They could be the same sugar. They could be different sugars. It, it could be either one, Okay. So uh, the main polysaccharide you and I use is something called glycogen. Glycogen is a place we can take some excess sugar that we don't use right away and we can store it for a brief period, only for about 24 hours or so. But look where we store it. We store it in the muscles. And that way, if we're exercising, we're running, and, and we need some a boost of energy because our muscles are turning to rubber, that's where it's going to come from. We'll break that glycogen down. It's also in the liver, okay? So, you know, we can use uh, glycogen as a, a storage vessel. Unfortunately, we can't store it for as long as we can uh, lipids and some other things in our body. 
but there is a period of time uh, we can store that that excess sugar. Uh, think about if you're an athlete or a long distance runner. A lot of times coaches will have you carbo load, uh, eat a complex carbohydrate like spaghetti or lasagna or some something like that. 24 hours before your event, the night before. A lot of, I know cross country has team meals um, the day before an event because we can take that complex carbohydrate, we can store it in our muscles. Then when we start running the next day and do our athletic contest, we have glycogen to uh, break down and use. Okay, so it's a great energy source. Unfortunately, it's limited in the time we can use it, but it works pretty well for that. Okay, now plants do something a little bit different. Uh, They use uh, a, a polysaccharide in the form of what we call starch. Think about a starchy food like potatoes. They have a ton of these, okay? It doesn't necessarily make it really sweet. Uh, you would think, oh, we're going to put a bunch of sugar together. That's going to make it super sweet. Not necessarily, but it is a high-energy food. So starch is a great thing uh, that we use all the time as a polysaccharide and breakdown and use for energy. Plants also have another one called cellulose. Uh Wood has a lot of cellulose in it. Plant cell walls have a lot of cellulose in it. We can't break that down very well. Uh, But if you crunch into a piece of celery or a carrot or an apple, that's what your teeth is is crunching into is that cellulose. And you hear that crunching sound when we break that down. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Probably the most famous uh, organism that breaks down cellulose is termites, right? They eat wood. Uh, they're just terrible if they get into a house and they, they break down wood. They themselves can't digest cellulose any better than you and I can. But they have a special bacteria in their gut that has the ability to break this down. So the bacteria get energy. The termite benefits from it because they don't use all that, that, that uh, energy. So a termite doesn't really break the cellulose down, but the bacteria in the gut does. So it's kind of interesting. So those are just some other types of uh, polysaccharides. This stuff in red uh, and blue, make sure you put in your uh, uh, foldable so you can use it for uh, um, the test down the road. So put that inside. This is what cellulose looks like. There's not much airspace in there. It's pretty dense. You can see why we'd have a hard time breaking that down. Whereas starch, you know, a lot of space in there. It's easy to break down. Think of all these little blobs as being an energy source. Okay. So that's kind of a a quick synopsis on what a carbohydrate does. We're going to come back to these when we go over photosynthesis and respiration. So I just want to kind of hit the highlights again. We're going to circle back to that uh, down the road. Okay. Uh, The only other thing I kind of wanted to to go over today, so I'm going to combine two days and notes into one. So this is what I'm actually going over with my bio one students today in class. So uh, we'll be on, uh, we'll be caught up and that's lipids. Lipids is a fancy word for fats, right? Now, they're also made of carbon and and mainly hydrogen, um, and and they're not soluble in water. They're a little bit different in how they're produced. They're not made the same way as carbs and proteins and nucleic acids are. They use that polymerization, monomer, polymer type of thing. Uh, These guys are a little bit different. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, But what are lipids? They're fats, oils, and waxes. Highlight that. Okay, fats, oils, and waxes, not soluble in water. That's a good thing to put in your foldable as well. We use them to store energy. We can store energy a lot better than we can with the carbs. We also use them for biological membranes and waterproof coverings. We went over that the other day. Uh, Steroids are also uh, technically a lipid. And we have a lot of uh, steroids in our body that are hormones that work as chemical messengers. you know, I always laugh because, you know, I go to this my NAMI class and, and I always ask them a question. I said, how many of you have ever taken steroids? And, and, they're, and none of their hands right, raise up because they're thinking, oh, those are those bad things that athletes abuse and get big bodies and get banned from the Olympics and that type of thing. And that is called an anabolic steroid. It speeds up your metabolism and they're not good if they're abused. But then I laugh and said, all of your hands should have went up because if you've ever eaten an egg, cholesterol is a is a steroid it is a lipid it's a steroid so steroids are not all bad i think they get a bad rap because of the of the ones you hear about in the news all the time but there there's some natural ones too but that's just another classification so 
lipids or fats, oils, and waxes, okay? Now, how they're made is a little bit different than the other three macromolecules. So uh, they're formed by combining two things together. Glycerol, which is what I have in yellow, is this two hydrogens, a carbon and an oxygen in, in, in a group of three. We call this a triglyceride because there's three of these. Makes sense. Three glycerols. Triglyceride means three. And then we get these big, long fatty acid tails hooked to them. And this is what's going to determine what kind of fat you're dealing with. Some are healthier than others. Dealing with how are these tails hooked on here. Every lipid has these three uh, glycerols, but these tails is what makes one lipid different from another and a wax different than a fat or fat different than, a, than an oil. Okay. Uh, it's got to do with these tails. Okay. Um, so when you look at lipids and I have a, a, a video that I'll eventually post. I want you to watch. We won't take time to do it now, but here's the thing. And this is the big thing I want you to highlight. There are three types of lipids. They're saturated, unsaturated, and polyunsaturated. All right. And the video kind of describes these a little bit too. Uh, saturated means they have just a single bond. Okay. So there's just a single bond between the carbons uh, in the chains. Uh, the, the, the unsaturated has at least one carbon to carbon double bond. They're a, little, they're a little different as far as breaking them down. And then we got these lipids that are called polyunsaturated that are more than one double bond. Okay. And some of these are, are easier to break down than others. And sometimes we can't break them down very well. And they accumulate in our body and they cause us health issues and weight gain and that type of thing. So let me go ahead and, and play the video. I was going to just have you look at it. I'm just going to go ahead and play it for you. It might be a little bit of a an echo, I apologize, uh, but you'll get the drift here. So here we go. If I can get the cue up here, um, maybe. Yeah, let's see if I, you're just going to hear it and, and you may, I may disappear, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully you can still, no, I'm still there, I guess. That's fine. There I go. So let's see if we can load this up and play it real quick. Here we go. So let's see if we can get this to play. If not, I will post it online. And you can, uh, here we go, see the, that's it. Let's see if we can make it bigger. There we go. Olive oil Olive is 100% fat. fat. There's nothing, There's else, nothing in else in it. Pancake, Pancake mix, on the, mix on the other hand, is only about 11% fat. fat. And yet, and yet olive, oil olive oil is good for, is good for you. you. And pancake, and pancake mix, is mix is not. Why is that? Why is that? As it turns, As it out, turns out, the amount the of fat, fat we eat doesn't impact, doesn't impact our, our weight or weight cholesterol or, cholesterol or, risk, or of risk of heart, heart disease nearly, disease nearly as, much as much as what as kind of fat we eat. But let's back up. What is fat? If we were to if zoom we were in, to on, a zoom in salmon, on a salmon, which is a fatty, which is a fatty fit, past the, past organs, the organs, past the tissues, past the tissues into, the, into cells, the cells, we would see we that, would the, see stuff that the stuff we call fat, fat is, actually is actually made up of molecules, of molecules called triglycerides, triglycerides and they are not, they are not all, alike. all alike. Here's one example. Here's one example. Those, three Those three carbons on the left, on the left that's, glycerol. that's glycerol. And you can think and of that as the backbone that holds the rest of the molecule together. The three long chains on the right are called fatty acids. And it's subtle differences in the structures of these chains that determine whether a fat is, let's say, solid or liquid. Whether or not or not it goes rancid, rancid quickly, quickly. And, and most importantly, most importantly how, good how good or how bad, or how bad, it, is bad it is for you. Let's take a look, take at, some a look at some of these differences. One is length. One is length. Fatty, acids fatty acids can be short, can be short or, long. or long. Another, Another more, important more important difference is the type of bond, bond between the carbon atoms. Carbon atoms. Some, some fatty acids, fatty acids have, only have only single bonds. Single bonds. Others, Others have both have single and double bonds. Fatty acids with only single bonds are called saturated. And those with one or more double bonds are called unsaturated. Now most unsaturated fats are good for you. For you. While, saturated While saturated fats, fats are bad for you, excess. For, for, for saturated, for saturated fats, fats, the story pretty much ends, ends there, there, but not, but not for, unsaturated for unsaturated fats. fats. The, double the double bonds in these, in these molecules have kind of a weird, weird property. property. They're rigid. They're rigid. So that means so that, that means there are that there two are ways to arrange, to arrange every, double every double bond. The first, the first is like this, where both where hydrogens, hydrogens are on the same, on the same side and both and carbons, carbons are on the same, on the same side. side. The second, the second way, way is like this. Now the hydrogens and carbons are on opposite sides of the double bond. Now, even now, though even both, though of, these both of these molecules are made up, are made up of exactly, exactly the same the building same blocks, blocks, they are two, they are two completely, completely different substances, and they, and they behave completely, completely differently, differently inside, inside of us. Of us.
The configuration, the configuration on the left is called SIS, which you've probably, you've probably never, heard never heard of. The one on the, the, one right, on the right is called is Trans, called trans and, you and you probably have heard of trans fats, trans fats before. before. They don't go they rancid. Don't go rancid. They're, more They're more stable during, stable during, during deep frying. Deep frying. And they can and change, they can the, change texture the texture of foods in ways that other fats just fat can't. can't. They're also They're terrible, terrible for your health. health. By far By worse than saturated fat. Even though technically, they're a type of unsaturated fat. Now I know that now, seems, I know that crazy, seems crazy, but your body but your doesn't body care doesn't what a molecule, care what a molecule looks, looks like on paper. Like on paper. All, that All that matters is the 3D, 3D shape, shape, where the molecule, where the molecule fits, fits, where it doesn't, and what pathways it interferes with. So how do you so know if a food, food has trans, trans fat, fat in it? Well, the only well, the sure only way to know is if you see the words partially hydrogenated in the ingredients list. Don't let nutrition labels or advertising fool you. The FDA allows manufacturers to claim that their products contain, quote, zero grams of trans fat, even if they actually have up to half a gram, a gram per, per serving. serving. But there are but there no hard and fast, fast rules about how small a serving, serving can be, and that, and means, and that means you'll have to rely, you'll have to rely on, on seeing, seeing those key words, words partially, partially hydrogenated, hydrogenated, because that's, because how, that's trans how trans fats, fats are, made are made by partially, by partially hydrogenated, hydrogenated unsaturated, unsaturated fats. fats. So let's go back, so let's to, go back to our olive oil and pancake mix from before. Olive oil is 100% fat. Pancake mix is only 11% fat. But olive oil is mostly unsaturated fat, and it has no trans fat at all. On the, other hand, On the other hand, more than more half, than the, half fat the fat in pancake, in pancake mix is either saturated, either saturated or, trans or trans fat. And so even, and so though, even olive though olive oil has 10 times, times as much fat as pancake, pancake mix, mix, it's healthy, it's healthy for, you, for you, whereas pancake, whereas pancake mix, mix is not. Is not. Now, I'm not trying now, to pick, not trying on, to pick pancake on pancake mix. mix. There, are there are lots of foods, foods with this type of fat profile. The point is this. It's not how much fat you eat, it's what kind of fat. And what makes a particular fat healthy or unhealthy is its shape. Okay, so you can see, um, there we go. So you can see what uh, is important about fats. It's, it's not uh, what, you know, what type of fat is, it's more about the shape of the fat more than, than how much fat is in a substance. Like the olive oil is 100% fat, but yet it's not as, it's pretty healthy for you, whereas that, uh, pancake mix, mix has mainly trans fat and saturated fat, which is hard to break down in the body. So that's what you have to understand about fat is uh, how much you consume and what type it is. And we have to be careful with that because it can cause us some health issues. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, put the highlight stuff in your foldable. You should be half done with your foldable now. Uh, we'll go through the other two tomorrow and you will, should be done with your foldable tomorrow as far as being put stuff in it. So uh, we can finish up notes next week and take a text test at the end of the week. All right. Hey, have a great day. Uh, we'll see you later. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.